And so, as we speak on the theme of new beginnings, there's a new beginning. Because Reverend John Scott hasn't done this here before at this moment in time. So, with great pleasure, and be prepared to have your assignment to be done. I invite Reverend Scott for this morning's message. Reverend John Scott. Thank you, Clive, and good morning, friends and family. Morning. Wonderful to see you on this wonderful morning at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and to see young adults who haven't been for a long time, I'm not going to call any names, <laughs> worshiping us with us this morning, and it's because they have uncles and aunts and people celebrating wonderful birthdays. And uh, my good friend and an important part of my own journey um, in this life is Stephanie Kerins from Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. And she didn't stand as a first time visitor because she's been here many times, but never to hear me speak. So welcome Stephanie to my heart and to Jamaica. I want to do a, a welcome to for those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web and listen to our messages here from the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in sunny Jamaica. Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave this world the great teaching known as Science of Mind, writes in his textbook of the same name, and I quote, there is a power for good in the, in the universe greater than you are and you can use it. There's a power for good in the universe, greater than you are. And I'm here to tell you this morning that it can use you. I have come to discover this in my ministry, and one of the most rewarding and fulfilling aspects of my calling is to watch people who allow this power for good in the universe to use them to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence and to help us create a world that works for everyone. One such person has been letting the light of spirit guide his journey as a truth seeker, a truth experiencer, and a truth teacher. And it is our own Norman Narr whose popular Wednesday evening forum, Continuing Conversations That Matter, celebrated its fifth birthday last Wednesday. Norman also, in his career, recently received yet another promotion um, with one of Jamaica's leading telecommunications service providers. I don't believe life gave him a lime, <laughs> but he certainly has been an aid to many folks who are thirsting after righteousness. That is the right use of the law. So I've entitled my encouragement, as you know I call my, my Sunday morning messages, they are encouragement because I want you to leave her feeling encouraged to let your light shine. And I've entitled this morning's encouragement, there is a power for good in the universe greater than you are and it can use you. And I've invited Norman to share with us, briefly, <laughs> how he has been using the power for good as well as how it has been using him. Norman? Let's give him a hand as he comes forward. Thank you, Reverend John. You're welcome. Good morning, good morning, folks. Good morning. Um, as Reverend John mentioned, on April 1st of this year, I celebrated the 50 year anniversary of the inception of the discussion group called Continuing Conversations That Matter. Also, effectively, April 1st, as promoted to head of business sales for Lime in Jamaica. So that's where the Lime. And lemon came from. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, Reverend John got wind of, got wind of all this. And as you know, 
he does not mince words, or even lizards for that matter. <laughs> he promptly sent me a congratulatory note, and in the same breath requested my autograph, preferably on the lower right hand corner of those rectangular sheets of paper issued by the bank. <laughs> <laughs> he also asked that I share some thoughts in a brief talk on how I have used the power for good in the universe and how it has used me. The teaching of this church has been near and dear to me and has been the cornerstone of my many successes. I can say with conviction that it's not merely by chance that I have achieved certain successes, but through an understanding and application of key spiritual principles. So as I look at how I have used the power for good in my life, there are certain key principles that I constantly abide by, each of which could be the subject of a full sermon. One, despite appearances, everything is always working out for the best in accordance with the law of growth and expansion. Two, where, from where I am, always strive to be in a better feeling place even slightly so, as is that feeling that gives rise to my vibration and ends point of attraction for the conditions and experiences in my life. Absolutely. Three, the understanding that the idea of prayer is to convince myself about what is to believe as to change my level of consciousness to attain a desired outcome. Amen. Four, the law of receiving is about giving which creates a vacuum or void to be filled in alignment with that which is given. Five, the law of cause and effect. And six, forgiveness is about releasing me mentally and about no one else. Armed with these principles, I've seen where they have helped in various spheres of my life. Professionally, I've practiced these principles and witnessed the resulting successes over the year. Whether it's exceeding sales target, in a competitively and economically challenged environment when I was at IBM, which lead to Lyme seeking my services, or the unfolding of the various milestone markers of success during my professional career at Lyme, which ultimately culminate in the recent promotion, these principles have been key. In my personal and family life, I continue to give praise to the wonderful family for which I am blessed. With the kids, I have not spared the rod, along with always giving them praise and showing them love and affection, reminding them how wonderful they are and how proud I am to be their dad. At arbitrary times, I, I say to children, the blessing, the Sunday school blessing, and just pause to kiss them, more so in private these days. <laughs> they are boys. <laughs> They are always reminded of the law of cause and effect that govern their lives and that there is no fooling of that law. I continue to play my esteemed role as a parent and enjoy sharing in the celebration and disappointment of the boys as they make their own mark, using each situation as an opportunity for growth. As for my lovely wife, people, people, people sometimes believe I bribe to get into a relationship with me. <laughs> We have had to navigate the waters of the cynics about marriage around us. The spiritual principle have helped us around many of the thorny issues. We remind ourselves that we create our own reality and that we can't change the other person, but only ourselves. I think it's that which contributes to our longevity together as we celebrate later this year, the 16 years of marriage. Wow. In the area of physical health and well-being, I'm work, I am a work in progress and want to affirm I am in good health as I continue to play football despite my age and size as I seek to defy. You can play left back. <laughs> yeah, as I seek to defy the beliefs around age and what one can or cannot do. As I turn now, to how I have allowed this power for God to use me, for good to use me, I stand on the following core principles. Be the change you want to see. Yes. 
to help humanity to recognize and awaken the spiritual magnificence within. Ever since I was exposed to this teaching and experienced the power within, I've been an advocate for this message and just want to share this with all who I encounter. Whether it is giving or lending a book, sending an article or a video link, or just having straight one-on-one -on -one discussions. I've received mixed results to the extent that some people rise to the challenge and embrace this new spirituality. And in other instances, people malice me. Because <laughs> as much of this teaching is about a big frog to swallow, the idea that you create your own reality through your level of consciousness and that any limitation in your experience is a result of your own and you are attracting the circumstances of your life, be them good or bad. This have not deterred me from the task at hand, and I just take solace in the fact that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. In one of those one-on-one -on -one discussions after sending many articles and loaning of books, I said to a friend, it is said, give a man a fish to feed him for a day, Teach a man to fish and you feed him for life. I asked if he understood what is meant, to which he responded, it means don't beg your money. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> but by meant I, 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 I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Although I relished the one-on-one -on -one discussion, it was the idea of having this encounter with a group rather than trying to change a church to facilitate the format of discussions I wanted. I decided to be the change that I wanted to see, hence the birthing of the Wednesday night discussion group containing conversations that matter. And so five years and some 200 sessions later, over 200 sessions later, I've been the channel through which many a subject, spiritual principles and practices have been explored. They express gratitudes for the insights derived and the witnessing of personal transformation that have taken place from which we collectively benefited has made it all worth the effort. The work does not stop there as I continue to expand the horizon to which I bring this message. Recently, I was asked to speak on a topic raising the bar, embracing change through innovation and technology at the UTEC Human Resource and Management Information System inaugural seminar. Whereas there was an expectation of a lot of details around information and communication technology, I was moved to speak about a different kind of technology from which all innovation emanates. And now as individuals, we can use this technology to effect changes in our life that ultimately affects the collective. I'm satisfied that the message was well received. Ladies and gentlemen, I continue to be that channel to which the message of the power within is shared. In your own way, I invite you to do the same. Namaste. Wow. You know I have to be a high risk taker to invite him to speak before me. <laughs> Thank you, Norman, and congrats again. You know, friends, when you decide to let the power for good use you, you become that one. You remember that little, those little brass um, statuettes they used to have of the three monkeys? You see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. That's what really begins to happen in your life. And a dear friend sent me a copy of a letter written by an 88-year-old um, who still drives her own car. And this grandmother writes, Dear grandmother, I went up to our local Christian bookstore and saw a honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker. So I bought it and put it on my bumper. Boy, am I glad I did. What an uplifting experience followed. I was stopped at a red light at a busy intersection, just lost in thought about the Lord and how good he is, and I didn't notice that the light had changed. <laughs> it's a good thing that someone else loves Jesus, because if he hadn't honked, I'd never have noticed. <laughs> I found that lots of people love Jesus. 
While I was sitting there, the guy behind me started honking like crazy, and then he leaned out of the window and screamed, for the love of God, go, 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 Jesus Christ, go. <laughs> what an exuberant cheerleader for Jesus. <laughs> Everyone started honking. I just leaned out of my window and started waving and smiling at all those loving people. I even honked my horn a few times to share in the love. There must have been a man from Jamaica there because I heard him yelling something about a sunny beach. Another guy was waving in a funny way with only his middle finger stuck up in the air. I asked my grandson in the back seat what that meant and he said, Grandma, it's a Hawaiian good luck sign. I've never been met anyone from Hawaii, and so I leaned out the window and gave him the good luck sign right back. Bless his heart. My grandson burst out laughing. Why, even he was enjoying this elevated religious experience of letting the power for good in the universe use us. A couple of people were so caught up in the joy of the moment that they got out of their cars and started walking towards me. I bet they wanted to pray or to ask what church I attended. I'd love to have told them it was the Center for Spiritual Living in Kingston, Jamaica. But this is when I noticed the light had changed. So grinning, I waved at all my brothers and sisters and drove on through the intersection. I noticed that I was only the only car that got through, though, before the light changed again. And I felt kind of sad I had to leave them after all the love we had shared. So I slowed the car down, leaned out the window, and gave them all the Hawaiian good luck sign. <laughs> One last time, and then I drove away. <laughs> Praise the Lord for the power for good in the universe that is using so many of us to spread love. We'll write again soon. Love, Grandma. <laughs> There really is a power for good in the universe that is greater than you are, but please don't give people the good luck sign. <laughs> we don't believe in good luck, we believe in the power of affirmative prayer. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, because one of the ways we learn to tap into the good is through the use of prayer. And if you're like me, I think many of us learned at a very early age to take your troubles to the Lord in prayer. But friends, that is the biggest mistake you could possibly make in your life. For whatever you take to the Lord in prayer, you get more of. Because the law of the Lord is designed to give you more of whatever you're praying about. The secret, as we in this teaching know, is to pray the solution, not, and I repeat, not the problem. So let us suppose that you let go of the problem and you know, after you have prayed or somebody has prayed for you in a scientific way, what we call affirmative prayer in this teaching, you end with that feeling of, ah, and so it is. Amen. And so you figure, I've prayed, now the rest is up to God, right? Wrong. Remember, your prayers are not for God. As harsh as this may seem, God does not require your prayers or your praise, and God certainly does not require your supplication. It is always the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You don't have to beg him for it. The purpose of prayer, then, is not to convince or persuade God, but to convince your own mind of God's good which has always been and will always be there for you. The truth is, in God and from God, there is always an eternal yes. That is why when you take your troubles to the Lord in prayer, the answer is yes. You, you have troubles? Some more here. We must be like them. Some more here. And when you take the solution, the recognition of your wholeness, your health, your wealth, your happiness, success, and fulfillment, when you take those positive things to the Lord in prayer, the answer is likewise, yes. Our part then is to get into a yes consciousness and stay there. Let us affirm together, in God there is an eternal and ever ready yes. Together, in God 
there is an eternal and ever ready yes. Dr. Ernest Holmes said, change your thinking, change your life. And that is the title of the, the course that we give at the, at the Tower Street Correctional Facility. Change your thinking, change your life. And those participants in that program say it over and over. I'm changing my thinking, and I'm watching my life change. For what he was saying is, change your mind and keep it changed. Sometimes, you know, we change our mind and then we change it back when the first little challenge comes. And then we change it back again. And then you say, I know, but you need to get off your butt and start thinking. I can and there is always a yes in God. So change your mind and keep it ch changed. And if you are not getting the results from your prayers that you, that you want, it may mean you haven't changed your mind. God has already done all that needs to be done for you to live your life in a victorious state of fulfillment. God created you in the image and likeness of good and endowed you with all the possibilities of the kingdom of God within you. What you need to do is believe it and act as though you believe it. The beautiful Jesus said in John 13, verse 17, if ye know these things, blessed are you if you do them, unquote. So when you say amen to a prayer, or so it is, as we say in this center, the next step is to act as if you believe that what you have prayed is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This means that you must get busy being what you affirmed. And this is what Norman just meant when he said he decided to be the change he wanted to be. There is a little confusion, you know, among we truth students concerning the oft-quoted injunction to treat and move your feet. The phrase actually originated with the Quakers, who affirm, when you pray, move your feet. That's their, that's their affirmation. When you pray, move your feet. Which I find interesting, since one of their practices is to sit in the silence until they are moved to do something. So let me clear it up for you. Treat or pray, as, we, as, we, as, as another word for treatment, and move your feet doesn't mean Pray and then run helter-skelter, hither, thither, and yon in search of the answer. The answer to your prayer can only come through you. That is, through your consciousness. Moving your feet, then, means to go and do what comes naturally. And if you remain still after you have prayed, instead of rushing into the world, you may most certainly receive the answer that you are seeking as to what to do and how to do it. And it will come naturally because God has already given you the gift and is already leading you along the path that you need to follow. But you need to be still for a little and listen. Eric Butterworth, in his book, The Universe is Calling, writes, and I quote, people often complain that they have not received their demonstration. That means the old picturing of the good that they have been praying for in a certain situation. Actually, they are probably holding back the process, uh, Butterworth says, because they are not letting the demonstration make them." Unquote. To use a popular phrase based on the game of tennis, the ball is in their court, but they act as if it were in God's. In Psalm 37, verse 9, the psalmist advises, and I quote, those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth, unquote. But this is another one of those instances where translation has led to some confusion. To wait on the Lord does not mean sitting idly watching reality TV shows because you have prayed for a job and are waiting for God to drop it through the ceiling into your lap. Nor does waiting on the Lord mean procrastinating about sending out your resume. The Hebrew word from which we get the word wait is kava, which literally means, and listen to this, to bind together. <coughs> to wait then is to bind together. 
So to wait on the Lord means to integrate yourself with the potential and power of your spiritual nature. In other words, to get yourself plugged in, tuned into the frequency of that for which you are praying, and turned on to the idea that it is already yours. And so, you know, if you tune into Fire 105, you're not going to get 90, FM 90. You're going to get Fire, which I've been listening to. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> Thank you, Tina Sherman, for turning me on to it. It's a young people's station. All of you should listen to it and get a... Uh, 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 what did Zoe say last week? Get yourself euthanized. <laughs> <laughs> the waiting then, my friends, is not a matter of time, but of consciousness. Stop thinking about the problem and get your mind stayed on God. We need to keep plugged in if we want to be a channel for the power for good in the universe. The vision for Centers for Spiritual Living is awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. St. Paul also says, and I quote, awake thou that sleepest that Christ will shine upon you, unquote. This, my friends, is a call to wake up and accept the glorious child of God self that you already are and whom you have been from the beginning of time. It is who you will always be. And your only challenge is to keep your inner eye single that is focused on what you want. Stop talking and praying and thinking about and worrying about what you do not want, because there is always a yes coming from the God presence who made the law. The law says what you give your attention to, if that's, the, that's the vibration that you're giving out, and you're going to attract more of the same to you. So this brings me to your assignment. And regulars at the Temple of Light, as Clive told you, may expect an assignment. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is not to honk your horn if you love Jesus or give people the Hawaiian good luck sign. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it this week, is after you say your prayers, and remember, don't talk about the problem in your prayers. Don't talk of illness, talk of radiant health. Don't talk of not having money, Talk about your prosperity as the wealthy child of a fabulously rich father. So after you've prayed, and I hope everybody here prays, starts their day with prayer, don't rush into your day. After you have prayed, your assignment is to give yourself three additional minutes with your eyes closed, just being still and listening to that still small voice within. When you close your physical eyes, you know, you open your inner eyes that enable you to see from the highest point of view. With your eyes closed, then, you are raising your vibration to the level of what you have just been praying for. Imagine yourself as having it, being it, feeling it, being in it. Use that God-given power of imagination to just embrace and accept the good that you wish and that you so richly deserve. And you know, friends, it's going to require some <laughs> diligence. You know why? The children or your partner's lunchbox needs to be packed. They are already late for school, and you are they are late, and you are sitting there having the jitters. So you're going to have to discipline yourself to give yourself that three minutes. And you know, my parents, before you drive out through the gate, bless the day and the road before you. Because you see, when you're upset and, and the child is again late, they're supposed to be there at 7.30 and we're, not, we're leaving home at 7.30 again. <laughs> you see what you've sent before you into the day? The anxiety and the stress, and it just colors everything. So it needs a discipline of you to say, let me become still for a moment. Do it if you have a business appointment. Before you, you, you go in, 
just become still for a moment and see yourself in a wonderful exchange of energy with whomever you're meeting with. See them agreeing with you, see them, see both of you problem solving in a win-win situation. Use this faculty of imagination to claim and grasp and embody the truth that you desire. And then you can let go knowing that there is no need to set things right because what you have done is you have, you, you have learned to see them right. No need to set anything right, just see it right. And the only way to accomplish this, as I said, is to turn from appearances, close your eyes to every apparent fact and condition, and open your inner eyes to the truth. You know, Jesus spoke about it. He called it judging righteous judgment. And he meant we must see things as they are intended to be, not as they appear to be. So if you're experiencing symptoms of illness, begin to visualize yourself as strong, capable, healthy. Stop talking about your bad knees or your allergies. If you have an ache or pain, you, it's much better just to place your hand over the spot and say, I bless you with the radiant health of God. If you require more abundant inflows of money, much better to take your purse or wallet in your hands and say, I bless you with the divine abundance of God. And if there's a relationship that needs healing, silently call the person's name and say, I bless you with the infinite love of God. It works much better than the Hawaiian good luck sign. <laughs> Let us say together, I am one with the power for good in the universe. Together, I am one with the power for good in the universe. It is greater than I, and it is using me in wondrous ways. It is greater than I, and it is using me in wondrous ways. Today is new, and I am newly awakened in it. Today is new, and I am newly awakened in it. To your neighbor say, there's a power for good in the universe greater than you are. Thank you for being a channel of its love and light. There's a power for good in the universe that is greater than you are. Thank you for being a channel of its love and light. You couldn't remember. There's a power for good in the universe that is greater than you are. Thank you for being a channel of its love and light. My friends, our responsive reading this morning reminds us that a journey of a thousand miles is begun by a single step. This morning, we have taken another step together on the eternal journey of light, life, and truth. Thank you for being such beautiful channels of the power for good in the universe. I know that it uses you in wondrous ways this week. Namaste.